Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions here with Pastor Sutton on this Friday, December 23rd. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. Ho, 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 ho. Hey, uh, yeah, and I'm wearing red in my heavy sweater. You know why I'm wearing my, red, my turtleneck and my heavy sweater? Because it's 15 below. Well, it's warmed up since then, but it was 15 below when I got up this morning. That's cold. I don't care who you are, what you're doing. That's cold. Um, however, the weather service got this whole thing wrong. And I am, I was just saying to Bonnie, I'm trying to figure this out because we were supposed to get like 10 to 15 inches of snow. And admittedly, um, Wednesday, yeah, Tuesday night, Wednesday, we got like four and a half inches, maybe five of really light stuff because it was so cold, fluff. Um, and admittedly, on the on the roads, the ice melt doesn't work when it's this cold. Um, and so the roads can become hazardous. That snow on them can become packed down. But I went from, I only from here to Tomahawk, but I went from here to Tomahawk twice yesterday, once um, around 2 o'clock and, and once a little after 9. And the interstate is perfectly clear. The roads in town are, are scattered slippery spots, but they're not they're not awful. Um, anybody driving with a little intelligence, not a problem. But I'm but I'm hearing that out in the Dakotas they've closed highways, and in Minnesota they've closed sections of ninety and uh, nine and of, of ninety and ninety four. It's cold. That's the snow is done out there. Um, there's snow out in California and, and in the in the, the northeast or northwest, uh, and the and the, the east is getting hit. But and I I'd be interesting to know. Okay, so Bob and Jeannie said their generac is running, and I um, I'd be interested to know what you guys are getting for snowfall over there. Because right now, if I look at if I look at AccuWeather's radar, um, if I look at AccuWeather's radar, we're done. And we haven't had snow since noon yesterday, I'll say. Um, and, I, and I canceled church up north, and I feel just terrible about that because the only real threat was the cold. And I, I admit, not everybody wants to go out when it's cold. But this this right now, the, the radar you're, you're looking at, 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 at uh, i got to get my directions right, it here, is, you know, the, the storm is, is, is past Wisconsin for all intents and purposes. Um, and has been most of the night. Michigan, you guys are getting it. Um, and it, it looks to me like down here in the south, a lot of it's lake effect coming off of, of Michigan and, and Muskegon and the Grand Rapids over to Lansing even. And, and that comes back too. I mean, lake effect works both directions. Um, and up here in the north, same thing, up, up by Taos and, and uh, Travis City and things like that. There's a pretty heavy band of snow in there. But this is all lake effect. The lakes aren't frozen over yet. So these cold winds are coming across the lake, picking up moisture and, and dropping snow up there. But Marlette, come on, guys. You got, you got nothing. It's clear. Unless you're getting snow and it's just not showing on the radar, which is possible. Um, but I, this is crazy. I mean, I said to Bonnie, I said, I don't know if, I don't want to show conspiracy, but, and, and, the forecasts and apparently the models showed that we were supposed to have all this, but out out here in Wisconsin, we didn't get it. Minnesota didn't get it. Um, it came and it went, and and this is where we live, and this is how it is. Um, this is the way it should be. So I I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm I'm confused by the whole thing. Um, I encourage you to stay warm, and if your power's out, that's a whole other animal. I understand that. I lived in Michigan. I know, um, but you, you, but and you need power to get your furnace running and things like that, which throws its own questions up. Uh, but wow, I, I just, I'm, I'm not. Anyway, don't be afraid to spend time with your family. Yeah, if you've got to go out east, out into the eastern states, you're probably not going. Uh, but if you're local. Make sure that you get to church for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And yes, I said Christmas Day. You can unwrap your presents on, on Christmas Eve and still get to church on Christmas Day. It's a Sunday this year. Um, don't forget the gifts that God has given you. 
in, in the body and blood of Christ and his promises. That's the whole reason we have Christmas is Jesus. All right. Rant off. Let's uh let's get back to business here. Today we're gonna today we're gonna have a, a, a fairly short um homily from Luther on on uh Herod. Um tomorrow we'll pick up the wise men themselves, but today is specifically on on Herod. I gotta close this window so I can see the text we're gonna be reading here. Um yeah, specifically Herod today. So let's see who's who's joined us. If my computer is willing to show me that today, I'm going to refresh my comment list here before I begin. Hey, Cindy, good morning. How cold is it up, up north where you are? I mean, I, last night when I drove from Harshaw to Tomahawk, which is like 15 minutes, it was seven below in Irma, it was nine below in Tomahawk. Um, so I imagine you guys, we're, we're sitting at, um, I don't know, Bonnie probably will put it up, but we're sitting right around 14 below right now. And I bet you guys are colder than that up there. I mean, I didn't look at the temperatures on the map, but good morning, Cindy. Kathy, good morning. Burr. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, Kathy, if you're still in Michigan, I bet you got that little propane heater in the back room running. Uh, if not, I, I bet the kids have the thermostat turned up a little bit, especially if you're down in Chicago. Jeannie, good morning to you and Bob. Gener as you, yeah, you said Generac seven or eight times this morning. So I'm guessing that I oh, just finished installation two weeks ago and glad to have it, I bet. Um, beats the heck out of having to wire everything up every time. Um. Yeah, yeah, and and if it's been starting on and off, that's interesting. Is your power off or is it fluctuating and just coming and going? Which, you know, if you've got wind and cold over there right now, I could see the fluctuations. I I don't miss living in Michigan, although um, we've had some rounds here with Wisconsin Public Service um, with some of the storms that came through last the summer before last. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Jerry, good morning. 17 degrees with a power surges. Okay. All right. Yeah. So up and down. Yeah. You probably, I'm guessing they're probably having, I don't know if you had, if you had, what kind of weather you had, but cold can cause the wires to contract and pull out of connections. Um, the wind, if you're getting wind, can do that. You said gusty. So yeah, I bet it's, you gotta love DTE. You gotta love DTE. Just when lines waving in the wind, trees going down on them. Uh, Deb and Ann and Grant, good morning to you guys on this chilly day. Michael, good morning. Highs in the twenties the next two nights. Yeah, still. Wow, plants coming in. Yeah, you definitely. Verna, good morning. Mushtak, good evening. Kathy, good morning. Oh, Kathy, good morning again. <laughs> Ashley, good morning. Merry Christmas to you as well. Sharon, good morning. There's, there's Bonnie chiming in. Okay, so she's telling us minus 13. I haven't looked at the thermometer in the kitchen here in a while. That's our that's our weather station. It's outside the back of the house here, which, you know, it's standing out on its own, so it, it gets a little better reading than stuff against the house. You think, yeah, Sharon, I think it's the wind blowing across the highways too, but there wasn't any last night. Um, and I'm not seeing a much wind right now. Maybe out in the Dakotas. Uh, maybe that's what the wind out in the... Don't get me going again. Jeannie, good morning. Again, oh, we have nothing yet. They have backed everything down. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you saw the weather map. I mean, I well, maybe you did, but I, I put it up there and you guys have... I mean, it's south of you. Uh, there's a, a band going south of Marlette and a band going north of Marlette. Uh, so yeah, um, Connie, 20 below in Harshaw. Okay. Uh, but a balm of 44 in the crawl space. <laughs> it needs to stay balmy in the crawl space. Otherwise you got frozen pipes. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Connie. Cindy says 13 below. Okay. Um, and there's Bonnie piping in good morning. saying good morning. Okay. I see you saying good morning to, uh, to Connie and Robin. Okay. Um, I think that's every, that's everybody I can see, all right? That's everybody's comments have shown up. It tells me I've got 14 people watching right now. 
So good morning to those who said hi. Good morning to those watching in the background. Good morning to the good morning and hello and greetings to those later today who will be watching. I forgot to hit the start record button again. I'm going to have to uh, make my life difficult. All right, let's get down to what we're doing today. As I said, um, we're going to be having a, a homily from Luther uh, from this little book from Martin Luther's Christmas book, Roland H. Uh, Bainton, the, the editor. Um, published by Augsburg Publishing. Um, but let's uh, let's begin as we do here. Uh, we'll, we'll have our reading and so on. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What I should have done is looked up the... Well, never mind. Uh, the, the, uh, the reading, Matthew chapter 2, verses just 1 through 6. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it was written, or so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I should scroll back down here in case anybody else pipes in. Um, all right, from, from this little book then, Herod, Luther writing here, uh, translated and edited by Roland Baton. Um, now, when, when Jesus it's kind of starts the same way. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. This gospel is a terror to the great, learned, holy, and powerful, because they all despise Christ. It is a comfort to the lowly, to whom alone Christ is revealed. The announcers of this event are commonly called the three kings, perhaps because they bear three gifts. We may let the simple have it, and so it does not matter much, though we are not told in Scripture whether there are two or three or how many. We may safely assume they came from Arabia or Sheba. This may be inferred from the presence of gold, and frankincense and myrrh, all of which are found in that land. We are not to suppose that they purchase them elsewhere, because the custom of the East is to make presents from the best fruit of the land. Nor should we assume with painters that one of the wise men brought gold, another frankincense, and a third myrrh, but each brought all. The Gospel calls them magi, not so much prophets as Magicians, masters of secret lore, they were not wizards in league with the devil, but experts in the properties of nature, like the alchemists who turn, try to turn copper into gold. Such secret knowledge of nature was given by God's Spirit to Jacob and Solomon, and was in great vogue in Persia and Arabia. It is a noble art, and has produced many wise men, but the art degenerated into necromancy and has been abused by the devil that the name magician has fallen into disrepute. These magi, or wise men, were not kings, but learned in the art of nature. Without doubt, they dabbled also in superstitions, for they allowed themselves to be guided entirely by the course of the star. They were like philosophers in Greece, the priests in Egypt, or the professors in our own universities. Hidden away in their lore is something of Christ and the way of life. These studies are no longer being cultivated in our universities, and the peasants know more about them than the doctors who have become the devil's mockingbirds. The wise men may be called natural scientists from the East or professors of natural science from Arabia. Some have wondered how they could cover so great a distance in so few days. The tradition is that they arrived on the twelfth night, whereas 
The geographers reckon that a 60-day journey from the chief city of Arabia to the coast of the Mediterranean, which lies only three German miles beyond Bethlehem. Such matters do not bother me. It is no article of faith to believe that they arrived on the twelfth night, or for that matter, that they need to have started from this chief city of Arabia. They could have found Mary 20 or 30 days after the birth because she was required by law, like any other woman, to stay in Bethlehem for purification at the end of six weeks. Still, I will not quarrel with the common belief in a miracle so long as it is not made into an article of faith and enforced. That which is not written in God's word does not need to be regarded as an article of faith. The point of the Gospels is that the prophecy was fulfilled at the birth of Christ under the first foreign prince, Herod, and that the stargazers out of the east came on a long journey to worship him when the priests when the priests and learned of his own land declined. Some say that since the wise men were taught by a star, we should all be stargazers. Well, of course, we must observe the sun sufficiently to recognize sunrise, midday, and sunset, and in, a, in the same way, the moon and the stars by night. The weather must be studied for plowing and reaping. But there is no need to know the size of the sun or the, its distance from the earth or what power it has over gold and the like. Comets and eclipses must be recognized as signs of the wrath of God, and that is enough. The star is, was simply a sign to the Magi, and the astrologers were not in a position to base their art upon this passage of the Gospels. The wise men did not try to cast Christ's horoscope. They simply saw that this was a sign of a great king, and they asked only where he was. In order to give no comfort to the astrologers, Christ made a brand new star as a sign of his birth. While the Magi knew that this star meant the birth of a king is more than I know, but I don't see any great miracle here. The Arabians were descended from Abraham, whose sons by Keturah dwelt in the east. Abraham was well informed because God said, How can I conceal what I am doing from Abraham? He would surely have passed this knowledge on not only to Isaac, but also to his other sons. And thus, from the sons of Abraham to the wise men, we could know, or from the, the, from the sons of Abraham to the wise men, could know that a king was to be born among the Jews, particularly when they saw his star over Judea. They could not have been so far distant that they were to, if they were to see it, not more than a four-day journey. How could they have supposed that the star was over Jerusalem if they had been so far away as commonly thought? Very probably they were close to the border of Judea near Egypt. Otherwise, they could not have seen the star, especially since it must have been low in the heavens. Had it been high like an ordinary star, men ten miles apart would equally have supposed it to be directly over them. Since it was able to stop, not merely over the town, but over the very house, it must have been low. It was a star especially created for this purpose. And not like other stars that traverse the heavens. The star stopped by night when, a, when the wise men were camping and in the morning ambled along at the pace they were riding. When the wise men received the divine revelation that the king of the Jews was born, they made straight for Jerusalem. For, of course, they expected to find him at the capital in a lordly castle in a golden chamber. Where else would common sense expect to find a king? But because they were so sure of themselves, the star left them. Then they were sorely tried, and they relied solely on human wisdom. Would surely, and they hit, sorry. Then they were sorely tried, and had they relied solely on human wisdom, would surely have said, confound it. We have come all this way for nothing. The star has deceived us. The devil has led us by an apparition. If a king had been born, we would not be, would it not be at the capital and in the palace? But when we come, the star disappears and we find no one who knows anything about him. Can it be that we foreigners should be the first to have news of him in a royal city? Everyone's so cold and unfriendly that no one offers to go with us but and show us the child. They do not believe themselves that to them 
the king is born. And shall we come and find him? How desolate for birth, the birth of a king. If a puppy were born, there would be some little stir. And here a king is supposed to be born and everything is so still. One of our shepherds makes more fuss over the birth of a babe. And when a cow calves, more people know about it than have heard of this king. Should not the people be singing, capering, lighting lamps and torches, be decking the streets with roses and mayflowers? What a miserable king we are seeking. What fools we have been to let ourselves start on this quest. Nature wants to feel and be certain before believing, but grace will believe before she feels. Faith steps gaily into the darkness, trusting simply in the word. But having come, they decided to inquire of the king before returning. At their report, Herod was the king was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Why was Herod terrified and all Jerusalem with him? He had good reason to be afraid because he had tyrannized over the Jews for 30 years. Though a foreigner, he was acquainted with the prophecy that the scepter should not depart from Jacob. And now that the time was fulfilled, he trembled and thought to himself, I have been king for 30 years and now the people are getting ready to oust me and these foreigners come and ask openly in the city for the newborn king. That sounds bad. But why was all Jerusalem troubled with him? The Jews feared that Herod and the Romans would shed much blood if they were, if there were a new king. They had resisted Herod and Rome and on early occasions and had been crushed. And they trusted more to the arm of man than to God. Then Herod gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together and demanded of them where Christ should be born. Herod, the rascal, was quite religious. Outwardly, he did everything that a good man should. He called in the wise men, the priests and scribes, and but showed his heart later when he murdered the innocents. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule of my people Israel. Now Herod had a crafty plan. The Jews, he thought, will hide the truth from me. But I will find out the town where this king is to be born and also the time. And if they hide him, I will catch him anyway. I will kill so many babies that he cannot escape. So he called the scribes to him and said, Where is Christ to be born? Then perhaps through fear the scribes answered him in the that in the prophet Micah it was written that he should be born in Bethlehem. Why did the star not take the wise men straight to Bethlehem without any necessity of consulting scriptures? Because God wanted to teach us that we should follow the scriptures and not our own murky ideas. This is, uh, there, uh, to, amen, amen, amen. Here, Luther. Burr, my legs are cold. Let's uh, let's continue this morning <clears throat> in prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And then for ourselves and others on this Friday morning, Almighty God and Father, the light of day summons me to the duties and privileges of the stewardship of life. Help me to be a good steward by revealing to me your will for my life. May I make the best possible use of the talents you have given me so that I may always be ready to give an account of my stewardship. In the activities of this day, give me the wisdom to recognize whatever is evil before I am ensnared by it. Grant me the strength to resist every temptation to sin and shame. Let me never be afraid to say, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Grant me the opportunity today to do good to someone who is in need of love. When others deny you, give me the courage to confess my faith. Show me how to live in a manner worthy of your holy name. This in Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who are suffering in body need, bodily need, soul or mind. We ask that you uh, grant continued healing to uh, Bill as he recovers from his carpal tunnel surgery, and that you would continue to be with Neely as he awaits the transplant. And we ask that you continue to be with all those who have asked for our prayers, especially Pat, Lois, Ann, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Ezra, and all those who call upon your most holy name. To all those who are in need, Lord, hear their prayers and answer them for the sake of Christ and according to your good and gracious will. This we ask in your holy name. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our daily devotions to a close. God's peace be with you, and we'll uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow morning, uh, Christmas Eve morning. I don't know if I'm going to record this one uh, and just have it ready or if I'll be here live. We'll just kind of play that by ear. Um, but uh, plan on going to church tomorrow, Christmas Eve. Many have Christmas Eve services or hymns and carols and readings as we do in some of ours, our Christmas programs, and also on Sunday. You know, and, and if you have to travel, if you are traveling, God bless you. And for going to see family, be safe. Keep warm. Uh, use your God-given sense uh, to do so. God's peace be with you, and we will see you back here again on Friday, on Saturday morning. God's peace.